The 9-11 Attacks, A Comprehensive Account and Global Aftermath On the morning of September 11, 2001, the United States woke up to what seemed like an ordinary day, a day no different from any other. People went about their usual routines, heading to work, school, or carrying out daily errands. The weather in New York was pristine, with clear blue skies. But what was about to unfold would forever change not only the course of American history, but also global geopolitics. At 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time, American Airlines Flight 11, a Boeing 767 that had taken off from Boston Logan International Airport and was en route to Los Angeles, crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. The collision killed hundreds instantly, and the fuel-laden aircraft exploded on impact, creating a massive fire that began to engulf the upper floors of the tower. The scene was one of confusion and disbelief. Was this an accident, or had something far more sinister just taken place? In the chaos that ensued, people across the city and the nation scrambled for answers. Firefighters, police officers, and emergency medical responders rushed to the site of the attack, trying to assess the situation and save as many lives as possible. The scene was terrifying, with smoke billowing from the gaping hole in the North Tower, debris raining down onto the streets below, and panicked office workers trapped on the upper floors of the skyscraper. As the live images of the burning tower were broadcast around the world, millions of people watched in horror, unaware that this was only the beginning of a much larger and more devastating attack. At 9.03 a.m., just 17 minutes after the first attack, United Airlines Flight 1075, also a Boeing 767 en route from Boston to Los Angeles, crashed into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. The impact was captured live on television, and in that moment, the world realized that the United States was under attack. The South Tower was hit at a lower point than the North Tower, causing more immediate structural damage, and a massive fireball erupted from the building, spreading debris across the surrounding area. This second strike left no doubt. This was a coordinated terrorist attack, and the scale of the destruction was beyond anything America had ever experienced. While New York City was in a state of shock and terror, the attacks continued elsewhere. At 9.37 a.m., American Airlines Flight 77, a Boeing 757 bound for Los Angeles from Washington Dulles International Airport, crashed into the Pentagon, the heart of the United States Department of Defense, located just outside Washington, D.C. The plane struck the western side of the building, killing 125 military personnel and civilians, in addition to the 59 passengers and crew on board the flight. The symbolism of the Pentagon attack was clear. The terrorists were not only targeting innocent civilians, but also the very institutions that represented America's military power and global influence. Meanwhile, a fourth hijacked plane, United Airlines Flight 93, had taken off from Newark International Airport bound for San Francisco. The passengers on board, having learned of the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon through phone calls with their loved ones, realized that their plane was part of the same plot. In an act of extraordinary bravery, a group of passengers decided to fight back against the hijackers in an attempt to prevent the plane from reaching its intended target, which intelligence later suggested was either the White House or the U.S. Capitol. At 10.03 a.m., after a struggle in the cockpit, Flight 93 crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, killing all 44 people on board but preventing even more devastating consequences had the hijackers succeeded in hitting a major governmental building. Back in New York, the situation was rapidly spiraling out of control, the fires raging in both the North and South Towers, fueled by the plane's jet fuel, weakened the steel framework of the buildings. At 9.59 a.m., less than an hour after it had been hit, the South Tower collapsed in a massive, catastrophic implosion. The building crumbled into a gigantic cloud of dust and debris, spreading devastation across Lower Manhattan. As millions watched in disbelief, Emergency responders and civilians were caught in the wreckage. The collapse of the South Tower signaled the beginning of the end for the World Trade Center complex.
Just 29 minutes later, at 10.28 a.m., the North Tower also collapsed, leaving nothing but rubble where the two iconic skyscrapers had once stood. In less than two hours, the World Trade Center, a symbol of global commerce and American economic strength, had been reduced to smoldering ruins. In addition to the nearly 3,000 people who lost their lives in the attacks, the destruction of the towers caused immense economic damage and left an indelible scar on the collective consciousness of the nation. The area surrounding Ground Zero, once a bustling hub of business and tourism, had become a disaster zone, filled with the debris of collapsed buildings, twisted steel, and the remnants of countless lives. The immediate aftermath of the attacks was one of chaos and heartbreak. Rescue workers, firefighters, and police officers worked tirelessly to search for survivors in the rubble of the World Trade Center. But the scope of the destruction was so vast that few were found alive. First responders risked their own lives, entering unstable and hazardous conditions to rescue those trapped beneath the wreckage. Across the country, people watched in disbelief and horror, struggling to comprehend the scale of the tragedy. Vigils were held, flags were flown at half-mast, and Americans from all walks of life came together to mourn the loss of thousands of innocent lives. In the wake of the attacks, U.S. government officials, intelligence agencies, and law enforcement worked rapidly to determine who was responsible. It soon became clear that the attacks were the work of al-Qaeda, a radical Islamist terrorist organization led by Osama bin Laden. Al-Qaeda had been responsible for previous attacks against U.S. interests, including the 1998 bombings of U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania and the 2000 attack on the USS Cole in Yemen. Bin Laden, who was living in Afghanistan under the protection of the Taliban regime, had openly declared his intention to wage a holy war against the United States and its allies. The 9-11 attacks were the culmination of years of planning and preparation by al-Qaeda operatives, many of whom had received training in al-Qaeda camps in Afghanistan. In the weeks following the attacks, President George W. Bush addressed the nation, vowing to bring the perpetrators to justice and declaring a war on terror. On October 7, 2001, the United States, along with its allies, launched Operation Enduring Freedom, a military campaign aimed at dismantling al-Qaeda and removing the Taliban from power in Afghanistan. The U.S. military, with the support of international coalition forces, swiftly overthrew the Taliban regime and destroyed many of al-Qaeda's training camps and operational bases. However, Osama bin Laden and many of his top lieutenants escaped capture and went into hiding, leading to a prolonged and difficult search that would last for nearly a decade. The 9-11 attacks also led to significant changes in U.S. domestic policy and national security. In the months following the attacks, Congress passed the USA Patriot Act, which expanded the government's surveillance and investigative powers to prevent future terrorist attacks. The law gave federal agencies like the FBI and the National Security Agency, NSA, greater authority to monitor communications, access personal records, and track financial transactions of individuals suspected of terrorism. While the Patriot Act was seen by many as a necessary tool for combating terrorism, it also raised concerns about privacy and civil liberties, as critics argued that the law gave the government too much power and infringed on the rights of American citizens. Another major development in the aftermath of 9-11 was the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, in 2002. The DHS was established to coordinate efforts to protect the United States from terrorist threats and respond to future disasters. It brought together 22 federal agencies, including the Transportation Security Administration, TSA, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, under one umbrella. The TSA in particular was tasked with overseeing airport security, which had been exposed as a major vulnerability during the 9-11 attacks. New security measures such as stricter baggage screening, advanced imaging technology, and more invasive passenger screening protocols became standard in airports across the country 
in an effort to prevent future hijackings. One of the most significant investigations into the 9-11 attacks was conducted by the National Commission on Terrorist Attacks upon the United States, commonly known as the 9-11 Commission. Established in 2002, the 9-11 Commission was tasked with investigating the circumstances leading up to the attacks, identifying the failures in U.S. intelligence and security, and making recommendations to prevent future attacks. The Commission's final report, published in 2004, provided a detailed account of how the attacks were planned and executed, as well as how the hijackers managed to evade detection despite being on the radar of various U.S. agencies. The report highlighted the lack of coordination between intelligence agencies, such as the CIA and FBI, and pointed to missed opportunities to stop the plot in its early stages. It also called for reforms to improve information sharing and interagency cooperation in the fight against terrorism. While the United States was focused on dismantling al-Qaeda and securing its own borders, the global response to 9-11 was profound. Nations around the world expressed solidarity with the U.S., and many joined the international coalition to fight terrorism. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, invoked Article 5 of its charter for the first time in its history, declaring that the attacks on the United States were an attack on all NATO members. This unprecedented show of unity led to widespread international cooperation in intelligence sharing, counterterrorism operations, and law enforcement efforts to track down and disrupt terrorist networks.